Functional things go wrong. And then if we continue not to get enough minerals in our diet, then our bodies start to change and we get organic disease happening. In the actual process in modern people, it isn't quite as easy as one, two, three like that. Because what we get actual in modern people, and I think people here will be able to relate to this or understand this, if you don't feel this way yourself, then you've seen it around you in many people, that first you have a functional disease, you have anxiety, depression, fatigue, for instance. Well, that doesn't just stay there. The person does something about that. So you get nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, over-the-counter drugs, aspirin, antidepressant drugs, anti-anxiety drugs, etc. So you don't just have the underlying functional disease, you now have drugs on top of that and drug side effects on top of that. And that's the first stage. And then that progresses to organic disease, and then we have surgical operation, joint replacement, organ removal, etc. And uh, here we have a picture of the modern world. This is what m most people in the civilized countries they're in this state now. They're somewhere between functional disease, taking many drugs, addicted to various substances, and on their way to physical degeneration. So they call these chronic degenerative diseases. And underlying these diseases, now, we can't be fanatical. We don't say every disease comes from this process, but a basic pathological process underneath this is nutrient deficiencies in the modern world, and especially broad-spectrum mineral deficiencies. I can give here, just let's take one mineral. We have magnesium, and here are uh, some of the symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. We have fatigue, nervousness. Oh, and by the way, this, these are all from peer-reviewed nutrition journal articles. All of these. This is not something I made up or read in the, the National Enquirer. We have fatigue, nervousness, irritability, loss of appetite, muscle weakness, nausea, vomiting, muscle spasms, seizures, spasms of the coronary artery in the heart, and kidney stones. So this is new deficiencies of one single uh, nutrient. And now I'd like to talk about the understanding of the role of minerals in medicine by medical science. Here is a list of the essential trace elements by the year of their recognition. And if we see this, we can understand why modern medicine doesn't place much emphasis on nutrition or on the role of trace elements, that most of these are recent discoveries in nutrition. I have on my office shelf at home a very highly sophisticated state-of-the-art nutrition book written for advanced nutritionists in 1938. And uh, if you read this book written in 1938, it has the section on minerals. And under the minerals chapter, it only discusses calcium, iron, and iodine. And it has one paragraph on the electrolytes. It has one paragraph on magnesium and four others. And it has four sentences on trace elements. This is in 1938. And you can see the reason here, up here. By 1935, they had only discovered one, two, three, four, five, six minerals that had a role in health in animal studies. They hadn't even proven that these had a role in, in human studies then in 1938. So there's really a turning point here. There's a long time here between chromium in 1959 and tin in 1970. 1970, that's pretty recent history. Some of the textbooks that we study were written in 1970. They, some of this new information hasn't even had a chance to find its way into textbooks yet, medical textbooks. And there we have all approximately half of the trace elements. Their role in human health was only discovered in the last 28 years. We have something in medicine that's called the 40-year rule. The 40-year rule says that it takes 40 years for a new scientific discovery to make its way into actual medical practice. And the, the classic one on that was some centuries ago, a doctor proved that vitamin C would cure scurvy, the disease scurvy. And it was proven, and it was proven scientifically, but it was 40 years later, 40 years later, when the British Navy started supplying fruits for their ocean-going ships so that the sailors wouldn't die of scurvy. And they estimate something like 100,000 sailors died in those 40 years. 
We have a more recent example here. I remember reading in 1997, that was last year while I was writing my book, there was a big headline on the front page of the paper that said, Selenium can help prevent cancer. It was finally out in the public and it got into the medical journals and they started, the doctors started saying in the medical journals in 1997, maybe we should be making sure people take selenium. Well, count back from 1997, what year do you get? 40 years, 1957. And there's your 40 year rule right there. So what you are engaged in here, a dawning understanding and you're experiencing in your cells and in your own bodies, the importance of trace minerals to your health and to the people around you, this is not some fad. You are in the beginning of the 40-year period here. And it's my prediction based on the study of medical history that by the year 2030, this will be in all the medical books, it will be a part of standard practice medicine, that people need to have trace element, full spectrum trace element supplementation in order to maintain human health. I apologize to our international audience that most of my information that I'm presenting tonight is based on American diets, North American diets, but it's the only information uh, I had available to me, so I'll uh, proceed. We had a, a historical document in the United States in the year 1986. The Surgeon General of the United States, who's the leading physician in the United States, public educator, issued a document about the role of nutrition in health. And this was a very important turning point in modern medicine in the United States because before that time, generally it was thought in, in conventional medicine that nutrition had very little role. And at that time, in 1986, uh, Dr. Koop, Dr. Elliot Koop, made the statement that the era of deficiency diseases is over. And now we have the problem of nutritional imbalances, like eating too much fat. And 12 years later now, that theory is now completely defunct because it has turned out that in the last 20 years every time anyone has done a survey of the nutrition in the American diet they found people with deficiencies some people some more some less they found deficiencies now I'd like to read these are also from uh, peer-reviewed nutrition journals these are the typical mineral deficiencies in the North American diet average North American diet has less than half of the recommended allowance of calcium in it. The average American diet for chromium, 90% of people in the United States do not consume enough chromium in their diet according to the minimum requirements recommended by the government. 75% of American diets are deficient in copper and the average American diet contains only half of the essential requirements of copper. The iron is uh, often deficient in children and adolescents. The average consumption of magnesium is less than half of the recommended allowance in the United States. And up to 85% of Americans don't consume the minimum requirements of magnesium uh, in their diet. And finally, selenium, uh, more than half of American diets are deficient in selenium. So what we have here is a country that on the surface of it is very prosperous and well-fed and even overfed by the obesity statistics. And when you analyze it, we're a civilization that is starving for minerals. We're in the midst of a mineral famine in this country. My next overhead here is going to show some of the symptoms that we're seeing every day in our patients, we see these every day in our clinic in Colorado, and uh, they're seen every day in doctor's offices and hospitals across the United States. What I've done here is I've only selected four minerals. I've selected calcium, magnesium, zinc, and iron. And the reason I selected these is that according to the United States Department of Agriculture, the average women in the United States, the majority of women in the United States are deficient in all four of these nutrients. And that the average male in the United States is deficient in magnesium and zinc. So I didn't just select these at random, I selected these because these are best documented, broad scale, population wide deficiencies. Just for the drama of it, I'm going to read all these things that can be caused simply by a mineral deficiency. Again, this is according to peer-reviewed nutrition articles. We have acne, agitation, alopecia, that's hair loss, anemia.